Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale US M103 heavy tank. Unlike the other smaller scale build videos that you see on my video listings, in which those builds are for private commission and belong to private collectors, this model here belongs to my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. If anyone is interested in having a model built to these specifications, you can contact me through the EastCoastArmory.com email address, which is info at EastCoastArmory.com for pricing and availability information. The model that you see here is built mostly out of the box, however, it does feature a couple aftermarket as well as custom add-ons, which I'll be going over in this video. First, a quick walk around the model. The model started off as this 135th scale plastic kit from Dragon. The kit is the M103A1 heavy tank. The kit is a recent release. It came out approximately two years ago. And before I go on further with the build, I'll go ahead and go back to when the model was first started to show what the kit contents are in the box. First, here's the box. As one of your typical Dragon style box arts done by Ronald Volstead. And also, like most modern Dragon kits, has a basic rundown of what the contents are on the back with that of CAD drawings. The box open. Here goes the kit. Starting with, the tank has vinyl track links made out of Dragon Styrene. They're nice and flexible and do have adequate detailing on them for the medium that they are represented in. Personally, in my opinion, the tracks, the, these type of rubber tracks are a big plus as they are easy to assemble and easy to paint. Tracks themselves have the guide teeth molded in and are very reminiscent to the M48 track links or rubber tracks that are found on the Tamiya M48A3 model kits. Digging into the box, we have here the turret pan that has some nice cast texturing rendered onto it. Similar cast texturing is also rendered onto the mantlet. And we also have here a runner full of machine guns. We have the M2HB as well as some M1919s. Also included are the cradles, are various cradles that are used for both machine guns that, are, that were used during the war. Now, this being a post-war tank, none of these early war period components will be used, but it's a nice addition to have in your spare parts box for in case of a rainy day project. Digging into the box, here we have the turret, as well as what appears to be the final drives. Turret detailing is pretty good. Now, the loader's hatch is molded into the turret from several of the modeling news groups out there. This kit is kind of dogged on in that apparently DML has some errors when it comes to some certain dimensions. However, basically from what I've seen, the kit should build adequately into a nice representation of an M103. Another complaint was that of the molded in hatch. 
A lot of model makers out there like to display their tanks with the hatches mold in, in the open position for that of either scratch built interiors or just to have a figure sitting in this position here. However, since most of my builds always have the hatches closed, this is not an issue for myself. Here goes the upper and lower hull. The M103, like the M48 has, and the M60, has a solid cast bathtub appearance to it. The Dragon kit is pretty good in having its cast texturing rendered, as well as other fine details molded in. This is also true for the top portion as well. Another nice feature is that the side skirts or the side fenders are not integrally molded into the top portion of the upper deck and like the real tank are separate pieces. Here go two more side, side fenders. Actually this whole run here looks to be that of the A1 components with that of the earlier style engine deck which was all grilled like the original M48. From the looks of it, this, these, this whole runner here is actually the later style, probably for the M103A2, that feature a lot more upgraded components from the A1. In fact, here go some more A2 components here, as we could see the grill, which is reminiscent to that of an M48, as well as an M60. And down to the bottom of the box, we have here the suspension and running gear. The tires also have some nice adequate detailing on them, as well as the hubs. And it looks like the rubber tires are a separate casting, which glues onto the hubs, which probably is done for the use of getting more finer, crisp detailing on some of the hub surfaces themselves. Also included is a set of instructions or a set of decals, some PE, and it looks like a piece of cable for use of a tow cable. And of course, no model kit is complete without a set of instructions. Instructions themselves are standard Dragon, and the build itself looks like to be one that should go over fairly easily. Starting with the model suspension, the model features the same exact running gear as an M48 Patton. In fact, Dragon, like I mentioned before, recycled the running gear from their M48 kit. The suspension assembles very well and very quickly. Just one quick tip, this also applies to all tanks of the Patton and Persian family. These tanks do feature several shock absorbers on the inside portion here of the hull. And as a quick tip, it's nice to take a little brush of silver or aluminum and paint the little portion of the shock absorber that makes contact with the larger portion of the tube. This would be present on the actual tanks as, as the, sus the suspension articulates, the paint would wear off on the shock absorber in this location over here. This is done to both sides of the tank suspension. Moving our way to the back of the model, it takes us here to the provisions for the travel lock. The kit gives you the option of having the travel lock either in the retracted or deployed state. For this model here, it is seen in the retracted state. In addition to the pieces being separately molded, there's also a small little piece of photo etch that are used for the little clamp mechanisms that we have here. The photo etch is a nice touch and is a simple component to assemble out of the box with no mods needed. While on the photo etch, the two fender supports are also comprised out of two very thin pieces of photo etch brass. Like with the M47 and the M26 Pershings, these long wide fendered American tanks had a needed the support of these two little straps here in order to help the tin work stay nice and taut. On the kit, the photo etch is very thin, but is also very usable. You have to be careful though, once the pieces are added, as they can bend and break very easily, 
So you have to have a lot of care when working in this portion here of the model during its construction. Moving our way to the front of the vehicle takes us to the model's bow headlights. The headlights are supplied with the kit and one unique feature of the headlights is that Dragon did not mold the headlights with the lenses already on. In fact, the lenses are supplied to you on a runner in which you simply glue them onto the headlight casing itself. Now the headlights on this kit are actually molded in opaque plastic so rather than using the kit parts I went ahead and added a drop of clear epoxy to the headlights simulating the bulb. The addition of the clear epoxy greatly helps the look of the model and replicates glass better than painted plastic. Also while on the front as of note we have here the fire extinguisher box and like on all American tanks the two fire extinguisher handles are painted in red. Moving our way to the tank's engine deck takes us to the tank's exhaust manifold. The M103A1 just like the M48A1 and the M48 featured a center mounted exhaust manifold featured in the center portion of the engine deck which was mounted underneath the turret. This is one portion of the build that the builder will have to make adjustments to in order to complete the model. Dragon, the kit supply piece, is very nicely detailed. They did do an adequate job with the manifold detailing itself as well as the what would have been the sheet metal cover. Unfortunately, the Dragon kit, the piece stands up too tall. And because of that, the turret will make contact with the manifold and will pre prevent you from actually making the turret centered with the tank. To adjust the piece, I went ahead and carefully with a file sanded down the extra material that was found on the exhaust manifold in order to make the turret fit. This is one piece where the builder will have to pay a lot of attention and be very careful as this piece here can easily be destroyed if over sanded. It's going to take a little bit of fitting, however, if, you t if you're slow and steady, you should be able to make the piece clear just like the way I have it here on this model. Once the piece, the extra material is removed, the turret will have absolutely no problem revolving around the engine deck. In addition to the photo etch clamps that I mentioned earlier, the tank does feature several other pieces that are done in photo etch, namely the little box here for the Pioneer tools, the straps here for the track ratchet jacks, as well as two small little brackets that are located here on the front portion of the fenders. The pieces bend fairly easily and install with a little bit of care. Another nice feature that the tank has is that of a real metal cable for that of the tow cable. The tow cable assembles very easily and also very quickly as well. Moving our way up to the turret, first takes us to the tank's main gun. The M103 tank series featured a high velocity 120 millimeter gun. The gun on the model is plastic, is pre-drilled out, and does have some detailing on it. Unfortunately, one critique that this tank has is that the gun barrel is too short. The barrel that you see on the tank here is an aftermarket replacement from RB model. The RB model gun barrel is comprised out of three components. The main barrel is CNC'd aluminum. It's very nicely done, has a nice taper to it. Also supplied with the gun is the bore evacuator and the retention nut. Both pieces are comprised out of CNC brass and are also very nicely done. In addition to the, the barrel's length, the retention cap has its retention screw detailing and also if I can get if I could get into frame, on the end of the gun barrel is actually the rifling marks that are found on the gun itself. In comparison with the Dragon kit gun, the difference is quite evident how much shorter the Dragon gun is. The RB model barrel is highly recommended and it's also a very simple addition that greatly improves the look of the model. The rest of the tire detailing is pretty much standard from the kit. It's assembled very easily and without any hiccups. On the M2HB, 
The Dragon Kit features a unique setup in which the bottom portion of the cradle, the part that connects to the M2, is actually made out of photo etch. It's a flat piece that you bend around the receiver of the M2HB. In order to do that, there are some molded in components on the M2 which are meant for the tripod ground use. You need to delete those in order to mount on the cradle tray in order to mount it into the tank as we see here. It's, it is simple to do, however you do need to take your time in both removal of the unneeded parts as well as the bending of the cradle frame. Once everything is completed, the gun can still pivot up and down as well as left and right. The gun's detailing is also adequate for a contemporary model. Overall, I'm very happy with the build and the outcome of the model. The build itself was very simple and pretty much straightforward with the exception of the hiccup with the exhaust manifold that I mentioned earlier. Also, as of note, this kit here is the first plastic rendition of this vehicle type in 135th scale. Prior to the release of this kit, the only other M103 variant that was on the market was a full resin M103A2 kit from Commander Models. That model is, was also very pricey and did have several other accuracy errors in it as well. As for the difficulty of the build itself, the build is only probably slightly more difficult to assemble than that of a Tamiya or an Academy M60 or an M48 Patton. The kit can easily be built by someone with intermediate to advanced skill level. As for a beginner, a beginner can tackle this build. However, he should have a couple other builds under his build before tackling something like this. The only thing to watch out for besides the mistake with the exhaust is the fact that you do have some small pieces of photo etch that can be fragile and if you take your time you should be able to get through the build without any issues. The model does make a nice addition to any M60 or Patton collection as well as anyone who's interested in post World War II and Cold War era vehicles. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 135th scale American M103 heavy tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 scale and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.